Hey everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing Ms. Marvel Volume 2 Generation Y. Generation Y picks up where no normal ends. Kamala Khan is now a superhero with the alias Ms. Marvel, fighting to keep safe the streets of Jersey City from an army of robots controlled by the mysterious inventor. She teams up with X-Man member Wolverine in search of a runaway mutant and form a student of the X-Mansion. During their mission, Kamala discovers the inventor's nefarious plans and commits to stopping the supervillain once and for all. To do this, she enlists the help of fellow Inhuman Lockjaw and a few other unlikely allies. She also learns more about the nature of her abilities and her role as an Inhuman herself. The story of Generation Y flows seamlessly from the end of the previous volume. It's basically the second half of No Normal, so the two work best when read together. Like No Normal, the tone of Generation Y is light and playful, never taking itself too seriously and offering up the same art style that made the first so enjoyable, complete with visual humour and hidden gags. Kamala remains an interesting, funny character, and there are some great moments that show off her personality. My favourites were Kamala fangirling over Wolverine, much to the Canadian mutant's distress, and an impromptu speech given near the end as Kamala must convince a group of disillusioned youths to join her side. The inventor is an extremely bizarre villain, a clone of Thomas Edison accidentally mixed with the DNA of its creator's pet cockatiel, he's every bit as ridiculous as you'd expect, but his silliness matches the tone perfectly. It also allows for what was probably my number one favourite moment, Ms. Marvel fighting the inventor as he pilots a giant mech, vaguely reminiscent of a wind-up toy that also happens to be wearing a pink bowler hat. That right there, that needs to be a Lego set. Bird-headed clones aside, Kamala's real fight in this volume is for nothing less than the future of her generation, dealing with the concept of her generation as unnecessary, unwanted, and lacking a place in an increasingly overpopulated world. This was a concept I found really interesting, especially because it gave Kamala the opportunity to struggle with a real moral dilemma, as the people that she seeks to rescue might not actually want to be rescued. However, as with the previous volume, Generation Y doesn't always seem like it goes far enough. Kamala continually flaunts the rules of her parents who, despite their bluster, appear to be the nicest and most understanding parents in the world. In fact, everyone is pretty understanding of Kamala, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does lead to a notable absence of interpersonal drama. The kind of thing that would tell Kamala's story outside of being Miss Marvel. It is still early days, and by not focusing too heavily on these aspects, there's plenty of room left for them to be brought up in future stories. Unfortunately, the way things are left with the inventor makes it unlikely he'll be back for round two. Though this being Marvel, you can never really know for sure. It's strongly hinted that the inventor's creator, and seeming minion, Nox, may well return but I personally didn't think the character left enough of an impact to be that excited to see him again. Ultimately, Generation Y is a fitting conclusion to the story built up in No Normal. Ms. Marvel has proven herself a competent superhero, and her world has opened up to a multitude of possible future storylines. It kind of has the feeling of a pilot episode of a TV series, showing off the main character and what she can do, and offering brief glimpses into her world and the other characters that are important to her. Also, some limits are placed on Kamala's powers, showing that she's not completely overpowered, and there's room enough for growth. As soon as I'd finished Generation Y, I could see the character's potential. I really think she would fit right in with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, with a movie or television series of her own. With Spider-Man finding his place in Captain America Civil War, and both Captain Marvel and Inhumans being adapted into movies, along with individual Inhumans cropping up in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as well, the timing seems perfect for the MCU to make space for a certain teenaged Inhuman bendy Muslim. So yeah, Generation Y, along with No Normal, highly recommend both of those for any comic book fan. Um, if you haven't seen it already and you're interested in watching my uh, review of Volume 1, then you can find it here. Um, thank you for watching this video. I will have a review of the third volume up very soon. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up or leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please subscribe to my channel. Farewell.